your Locked on the New York Rangers, your daily podcast on the New York Rangers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back, Blue Shirts fans, to episode number 674 of the Locked On New York Rangers podcast. I'm your host, John Chick. Just want to thank you guys, as always, for making Locked On New York Rangers your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms. That song you're hearing right now is, of course, Leave the Lights On from our good friends in Pacifier. Check those guys out anywhere you get your music. And today we have uh, the Rangers preseason road opener to discuss. The Rangers, of course, on Tuesday night went to Boston and uh, came out on the short end of a 3-2 to two overtime decision. Uh, always a little bit disappointing to lose to a rival, even in the preseason. I mean, you know, the Rangers led this one for pretty much the whole way, or rather they didn't trail uh, the entire way until the overtime winner was scored by the Bruins. But, you know, the bigger picture here and the thing that I think we need to focus on today and kind of keep our eyes on as fans is, once again, the ongoing battles for roster spots, prominent roles on the team, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And I wanted to start today's episode by discussing the line combinations as well as the defense pairings. And I also want to kind of single out the guys that played in each of the first two New York Ranger preseason games. Because, you know, Tuesday night was a much, much different team from what we saw on Monday night, as I figured it would be. You know, the Rangers have a lot of players in training camp, and obviously everybody's going to get a chance to, uh, you know, play in these games. But there were five players, all of them forwards, who actually got to play in each of these first two games. So going to discuss that in just a second. Uh, but first, let's just go through the lineup really quick here. You got a top line of uh, Vincent Trocek centering Jimmy Vesey on his left wing and Alexi Lafreniere on his his right wing. And what's interesting about this is that Jimmy Vesey actually played in the first game on the right wing. He can play both. And obviously, you know, the fact that he can play both wings can only bode well for his chances of making this team uh, continuing to play very, very well as he has in these two preseason games is even more important. And we're going to discuss Vesey's performance uh, momentarily here, but interesting to see VZ go from the right wing to the left wing uh, from one night to the next here and showing off his versatility. And speaking of versatility, Alexi Lafreniere, typically, obviously, a left winger. He plays the right wing here. You know, when the Rangers first kind of got rolling with training camp, we saw that the kid line was still together. You had Hedl at center, uh, Lafreniere at the left wing, Capo Caco at the right wing. And part of the reason for that, it would seem, would be to keep Jimmy Vesey on his natural left wing. Uh, excuse me, keep Alexi Lafreniere on his natural left wing. And, you know, obviously that's what it's looking like the Rangers might do come opening night. Uh, but here it was good to see Alexi Lafreniere play some right wing because that's always an option that I think the Rangers should uh, keep in their back pocket. You know, it's it's tough because obviously, and we've talked about this before, but you've got Kreider and Panarin that both play left wing. And they're both going to be in the top six, obviously. So for Lafreniere to crack the top six, he kind of has to move over to the right side. And, uh, you know, maybe at some point he'll do that. Maybe we'll see him on the right wing with Kreider and Mika or whatever it might be. But interesting to see him uh, playing on the right side here. And again, showing his versatility and uh, had a good game, scored a goal in this game. So I don't think it's too much of an issue for Lafreniere. Lafreniere also sustained an injury in this game, but the Rangers are saying that he's going to be okay. And we'll talk about that more in just a second as well. Yet a second line of Johnny Brodzinski at center, uh, Turner Elson at left wing, and Vitaly Krausov on the right wing. I thought Brodzinski had a pretty solid night, couple of scoring opportunities. He put one off the crossbar at one point in this game. And uh, Vitaly Krausov did okay. You know, a couple of uh, nice passes that set up some scoring opportunities for the New York Rangers. And, you know, obviously Krausov has a lot to prove this offseason. And he was also one of two or one of the uh, five forwards that played in each of the first two games here. Third line, you've got Gustav Riedel centering Will Cooley on the left wing, Dryden Hunt on the right wing. You also had a fourth line of Carpenter centering Trevino on the left wing and Gauthier on the right wing. And then the defense pairings, Lindgren and Fox, you had Tenorti and Skinner, and then you had Robertson and Emerson. And Robertson, you know, did okay for himself. He kind of got involved in a mix-up behind uh, the net and ended up taking a penalty. You know, him and his opponent were kind of taking swings at each other, kind of taking swipes at each other, and uh, Robertson ended up going to the penalty box there. But Robertson overall, I thought, had a, 
a pretty good night for himself. You know, played solid defensive hockey and, uh, you know, dished out a hit or two. So that was nice to see as well. Robertson actually ended up getting two minutes and 15 seconds on the power play time. And I thought he made a couple of nice passes while the Rangers were on the man advantage. You know, Robertson has a reputation of being a stay-at-home defenseman. And certainly if he does end up making this team, which, you know, we'll see how that shakes out. If he makes this team, very, very unlikely that he's going to see any time on the power play because the Rangers have a lot of, you know, good offensive defensemen that would clearly, I would think, be in line before Matthew Robertson would be. But he made a couple of nice passes on one of the Rangers' uh, early power plays. And overall, again, I thought he had a pretty nice game for himself. But I did want to talk quickly here about uh, the five players who played in each of the first two games. And we actually, uh, I alluded to a couple of them just a second ago, but yeah, Jimmy Vesey, and this makes a ton of sense because Jimmy Vesey is in camp on a PTO. It could go either way as far as him making this team or not, but he's played tremendously well over these first two games here. Uh, it's really stood out in a positive way. Seems like he's creating scoring opportunities every time he's out there. Uh, he took a hit and got knocked to the ice, and that led to a goal, and we'll get into that in greater detail in just a second. We'll kind of break down that play, but VZ ends up with two assists in this game uh, one night after scoring the Rangers' first goal of the preseason, which occurred on the power play. Uh, VZ's been getting time on the power play. He's been getting some time on the penalty kill as far as you know these first two games are concerned here, and in this game last night, VZ actually had 19 minutes and 24 seconds of ice time, which was second on the team among forwards, only to Vincent Trocek, who had 2014. So I like the fact that, uh, once again, they're giving VZ every opportunity to earn himself a roster spot, a true 50-50 uh, player coming into this camp. But he's off to a great start, and he's certainly strengthening his cause uh, as far as you know potentially being out there on opening night for the Rangers. Then you've got Vitaly Kravtsov. I mentioned him a second ago as well. Again, I think it makes all the sense in the world to get him into as many of these preseason games as possible, get him a bunch of reps, get him a bunch of ice time, and that's what the Rangers thus far are doing. He didn't have quite as much ice time as uh, VZ did, but Krasov ends up with 16 minutes and 27 seconds, including 4 minutes and 19 seconds of ice time. Has played decently well over these first two preseason games. I don't think he's jumped off the screen in the way that Jimmy VZ has at times. But Krasov, you know, again, somebody that has a chance to become an ultimate X-factor for this team. And then you've got Gustav Riedahl. He was very strong on the penalty kill in the first game. Didn't really notice him as much in this one. But again, somebody that's gunning for, you know, a fourth line spot on this team on opening night. We'll see how that continues to play out. But when you're involved in a training camp battle and a position positional battle for a roster spot, uh, I think it makes all the sense in the world for you to be given, once again, every opportunity to put your best foot forward. And uh, Riedel in this game, for anyone wondering, ended up with just 12 minutes and 53 seconds of ice time. But he did get to play in each of the first two games, so that's uh, obviously a good thing for him. Bobby Trevino, again, somebody that certainly seems to be a roster long shot, but he's a scrappy player, plays with a lot of energy, a lot of emotion, and somebody that I've maintained on here. If he makes this Ranger team out of training camp, which, again, seems like a long shot, but if he does, or if he at some other point ends up getting a chance, I think he has a chance to become a uh, pretty popular New York Ranger among the fan base because he is so small. They said on this broadcast that he's 168 pounds after adding 10 or uh, 12 pounds this offseason. So uh, obviously, never going to be the bigger, biggest guy on the ice, more often going to be the smallest guy on the ice, but doesn't play like it. And I, I think, again, he could win himself over uh, with Ranger fans if he ends up making the team. And then the last one was... Ryan Carpenter. And Carpenter, I thought he scuffled a little bit in this game. He had a couple of uh, what I would call giveaways. You know, he had the puck in his own zone. There was one time in the first period where he got his pocket picked a little bit by his opponent and led to a decent scoring chance for the Bruins. There was another instance, I think this one was maybe in the third period, where he was trying to clear the puck and it got knocked down and stayed in the zone. So not the best night for Carpenter, at least in my very humble estimation here. But you know, there's four games left in the preseason. There's training camp and all that good stuff. And uh, Carpenter, another guy who's in a battle to uh, crack that opening night roster for the New York Rangers. And also wanted to quickly just mention the guys that have not played, uh, the notable players that have not played thus far for the Rangers. That would be Artemi Panarin, Barclay Goodrow, and Sammy Blay. Uh, Panarin, you know, I, I think with him, it's probably just a case of, well, he's a veteran player. He's a star in this league. I don't think he needs to play a whole ton of, uh, you know, preseason minutes to know what he's doing when the regular season rolls around. So I would imagine, I don't know if Gallant commented on this, I would imagine that's the only reason why we haven't seen Panarin as of yet. I mean, there's no report of an injury or anything like that. 
So we'll see. I would imagine he'll be out there uh, probably at least one of the two games on Thursday and Friday against the Devils. And then uh, Barclay Goodrow had an injury, played through it last year in the playoffs. Goodrow is already on record as saying that, you know, if, if these games counted, if this was the regular season, he would be out there. They're taking it slow with Goodrow, and rightfully so, another veteran. And, uh, you know, as long as he gets into a game or two at the end of the preseason, I think he'll be just fine. And then you've got Sammy Blay, obviously coming off of the torn ACL in last year's early parts of the regular season. And it's interesting with Blay that he hasn't played yet. I mean, I imagine, again, he's coming off a torn ACL. They just want to take it slow. But they did mention not too long ago uh, that Blay would be participating without any restrictions. So a little bit of a mixed message there. But again, I would imagine we'll see Blay sooner rather than later. And it's just a case of you know them wanting him to be able to get his legs under him before they throw him out there uh, for some preseason action. But we'll see. I get the feeling uh, probably Panarin and Blay We'll see sooner rather than later. Goodrow, you know, with the injury, maybe they'll hold off a little bit longer with him, but I don't think it's uh, too much to worry about. Uh, so in just a second, we're going to go ahead and break down the highlights and the lowlights of this game and just kind of talk about everything going on with the Rangers and, you know, where things stand and what to look for for the rest of the preseason. We will do all of that in just a second. But first, I just want to let everybody know today's episode of Locked On New York Rangers is brought to you by BetOnline.net. BetOnline.net is your number one source for football betting info this season. Find all the latest player developments, team matchups, news, podcasts, and in-depth articles and analysis on every game you can find. And as always, BetOnline remains your continued source for all your sport wagering information with live betting and up-to-the-minute scores for every sport out there. The fastest and easiest way to check in on all your favorite games and events, including the NHL, MLB, MMA, boxing, and golf. Head to betonline.net or use your mobile device to learn more. Bet online, where the game starts. All right, I just want to thank you guys, as always, for making Locked On New York Rangers your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms. All right, so this game was kind of interesting to me because I thought it was kind of a tale of two games as far as, you know, the uh, physicality and the chippiness were concerned. You know, the night before against the Islanders, that was pretty uh, pretty heated, pretty nasty, pretty hard-hitting right from the opening faceoff. This game, I remember thinking about halfway through, this is one of the most civil hockey games I've ever watched. There was uh, no trash talk. There was very little hitting. There were no extracurriculars. And that pretty much did a complete 180 the second half of the game. Uh, as I mentioned, Ru Matthew Robertson was involved in a little bit of a dust-up, and it just kind of escalated from there. And uh, definitely uh, the intensity... And, you know, the emotion in this game picked up from that point on, and uh, it got back to the kind of game you would expect the Rangers and Bruins to play against each other. I mean, maybe part of the reason for the, you know, civil start to this game, first of all, it's the preseason, and secondly, you know, a lot of the players that have been involved in some of the nastiness between the Rangers and Bruins over these past couple of seasons were not... Uh, you know, playing in this game. So obviously it's not the A lineups for either team, not even close, in fact. But uh, yeah, it definitely picked up after that. The intensity picked up. And, uh, you know, some good things for the Rangers. I thought Yaroslav Halak had a really nice game. He ends up stopping 14 out of 15 shots. He only gave up the one goal. And, um, you know, nothing that like really, really jumped off the page is like a highlight reel save that you're going to watch over and over and over again. But there was a sequence early in this game. It was in the first period. Uh, two really nice saves back to back. He made a save, gave up a rebound, but then he kicked out his left pad and uh, steered the puck aside. So that was really nice to see. Uh, saw a game for Yaroslav Halak. He played about half the game, came out uh, a little bit past the midway point of the second period. He was relieved by Louis Domingue, who... Looks like he's probably going to open up the season with the Hartford Wolf Pack. And Domingue played very well also. He uh, stopped 19 of 21 shots. There was a save that he made off of a turnover by the Rangers. Uh, I believe it might have been Trocek was trying to make a pass. And it got knocked down, started going the other way. And Louis Domingue, you know, it's basically a three-on-one. He moved hard to his right, made an excellent save to keep that puck out of the net. And uh, at the time, I believe, kept the game tied. Or the Rangers might have still been up by one at that point. But either way, a uh, really nice job by both goalies in this game, I thought. Uh, you know, up to the task of, for the most part, keeping the puck out of the net. And uh, I figure we might as well go to uh, the Ranger goals. That's always fun. It's always uh, fun to break down these times where the Rangers light the lamp here. And the Rangers took a one to nothing lead in the first period. Just a really nice, uh, you know, goal where one of those goals where everybody contributes. Everybody on the ice contributes. Uh, Lafreniere basically set the whole thing up. He was pressuring Swayman behind the net. You know, Swayman had left his crease to go play the puck, and Lafreniere was right there. He was on him, and the Bruins, you know, Swayman tried to move the puck. 
the Bruins couldn't get out of their zone. So Lafreniere won't end up with an assist on this play, but he basically set the whole thing in motion. I have VZ to Trocek. Trocek then dishes to Fox, and Fox rips it from the right side. Just an excellent pass from Trocek to Adam Fox, and nice to see Fox laying the lamp here in his first preseason game. It was interesting because Trocek was way back at the blue line. He was kind of running out of room. He had two Bruins pressuring him. They were kind of in his face, and that's when he passed down uh, to his right to Adam Fox, and then Fox, you know, from the inner portions of the right face-off circle there, takes a shot, once again beats Swayman. So the Rangers go up one to nothing uh, eight minutes into the game, and Jimmy Vesey also got an assist on this play, one of the two that he would get in this game. Adam Fox, by the way, later drew a penalty in the first period. So uh, really nice first showing for Adam Fox. I mean, would you really expect anything less? So that was awesome. And as far as the other Ranger goal, I want to uh, take you guys to the second period to discuss this one. You had Alexi Lafreniere scoring. This is after the Bruins had scored a goal that tied at 1-1. to -one. And once again, Jimmy vesey has got his fingerprints on this goal as well. Uh, VZ received a pass in front, kind of in the slot area. And this is the one where I was talking about during our intro here. He got knocked down to the ice, took a big hit from behind, but still got the shot away, basically as he was falling to the ice. And it looked like, you know, Swayman had the puck and the whistle was coming and the puck was going to be frozen. But uh, Swayman never actually had the puck. It somehow got through him. It was basically just sitting there. Uh, a couple of inches away from the goal line and kind of between uh, Swayman's legs. And nobody seemed to really know where this puck was except for the referee and Alexi Lafreniere. You know, a lot of times on a play like this, the ref will lose sight of the puck, he'll blow the whistle, and it's unfortunate because, you know, if that would have happened here, then obviously this goal by Lafreniere wouldn't have counted. But the ref obviously saw it, so did Lafreniere. And once again, Lafreniere just reaches between the uh, the legs with his stick of, uh, of Swayman and just pushes the puck right into the net, makes it 2-1. to one. So that was really nice to see. And as I mentioned uh, during the intro as well, there is nobody who has done more to increase or better his case of being on that opening night roster than Jimmy Vesey has in these first two games. I know there's some Ranger fans that aren't necessarily going to be excited about that because you want to see one of the kids, like a Brian Othman, a Will Cooley, whatever it might be. You know, Jimmy Vesey at this point has basically become a journeyman around this league. But if he's going to play like this, you know, throughout the preseason, throughout training camp, then I think it's only fair that he earns a spot on the opening night roster. I mean, if VZ continues to play the way he has over these first two games and you don't have him on the opening night roster, then I'm not really sure what the point of giving him a PTO was in the first place. He's done very well for himself. We'll see if he can keep it up. Obviously, Jimmy VZ looks like a man on a mission here, really wants to uh, secure himself a spot on that opening night roster. And we're going to continue talking about everything else in this game. You know, we'll go to the big finish and talk about, you know, the Rangers power play units, the Rangers penalty killing units as well. It was kind of interesting to see who was involved uh, with both the man advantage and the PK. And uh, we'll also just, you know, look ahead to what's coming up for the New York Rangers and where things sort of stand right now with this franchise and with players that are trying to, uh, you know, stake their claim to an opening night roster spot. And we will do all that in just a second. Something else that I definitely have to uh, call some attention to here is the goal that the Bruins scored at the beginning of the second period, which tied the score at one goal apiece. Uh, basically, it was a situation where you know the Bruins got in good on the forecheck. Ryan Lindgren had the puck behind the Ranger net, took a big hit from Studnika, and resulted in a turnover, and then a pass from Studnika in front to Greer, and Greer scores, and that makes it one-to-one, -one, just a tapping goal there right from the doorstep. And Ryan Lindgren to the surprise of absolutely no one, is bleeding after this play. And it's crazy because just in our last episode, there was a situation where Brent Offman, you know, he took a hit into the boards and his nose was bleeding a little bit. And I joked that, well, you know, Ryan Lindgren isn't playing in this game. So, you know, somebody has to pick up the slack in terms of, uh, you know, bleeding on the ice is concerned. And that was Offman, you know, on Monday night. And then, you know, a night later, Ryan Lindgren, First game action that he sees the entire preseason, he ends up bleeding. It wasn't too bad. And look, I wouldn't joke about this if I thought that there was anything resembling a serious injury. But with Ryan Lindgren, it's just what you come to expect at this point. He's a hard-nosed player and a situation here where he takes a hit. And of course, there's a little bit of blood spilled. And look, as I just mentioned, I don't want anybody to get hurt. I don't want to like make jokes about people potentially suffering injuries. But Ryan Lindgren's tough as nails. You know that's not going to stop him. He'll be right back out there for his next shift. But... I got to say, if, I, if somebody on the New York Rangers in a regular season game or even a playoff game ends up taking a high stick and a penalty is called on the opposition, I would like it to be Ryan Lindgren. First of all, again, tough as nails. He can handle it. 
Secondly, he's more likely than anybody else on the New York Rangers to bleed. And of course, with the high sticking, uh, that's the difference between a two-minute penalty on the opposition and a four-minute penalty on the opposition, the double minor. The double minor is called when somebody bleeds. Ryan Lindgren is more likely to bleed seemingly than anybody else on the New York Rangers. So uh, we'll see if that ever comes into play at any point during uh, the regular season or the playoffs. And then as far as special teams are concerned, definitely want to discuss that today as well. Uh, you had a top Ranger power play unit of Kravtsov, VZ, Lafreniere, Fox, and Trocek. So it's interesting to see, you know, how these players gelled together. They ended up going, I mean, not just these five players, but the Rangers as a team went 0 for 4 on the power play in this game. Thought the man advantage looked a little bit better in the previous game. Uh, there were just too many power plays where the Rangers didn't really set anything up all that well. Uh, Kravtsov did come pretty close to scoring, though. The Rangers had a power play, got some good puck movement. Uh, Trocek was involved. Adam Fox was involved. And uh, you know, there was a, an attempted pass, I believe, by Fox. And the puck ended up going on net. He had a nice skate save by, I think it was Swayman. think he was still in the game at the time. But it went off to the side. And Kravtsov had a chance to potentially score uh, from a sharp angle and wasn't quite able to do so. He had some open net, but his shot you know, caught a piece of the post or the crossbar and uh, went wide. So... You know, a little bit of a mixed bag for the power play. I think there's better nights ahead. And again, as I mentioned, uh, you know, this is not going to be the Ranger top power play unit when the season starts. I think we can all pretty much agree on that. But it's also interesting just to see how, you know, time on the power play was divided among the Rangers. You had Trocek out there for a team leading 443, or at least, you know, uh, among the forwards. Uh, he was out there for 443. Krasov was out there for 419. I like to see that as well. Give Krasov every chance that he possibly can to put his foot forward and claim a significant role on this team. Uh, Jimmy VZ actually had one second more than Krasov. He was out there for 420. Uh, Johnny Brodzinski got three minutes and 59 seconds. I thought Brodzinski had a pretty nice game for the Rangers as well. He's somebody that, you know, you hear the name, you don't necessarily get all that excited. But I think for the most part, when he's been up for this Ranger team, he's played fairly well. I mean, his ceiling seems to be limited, but I think he also has a very safe floor. He's not going to be somebody that goes out there and gets overwhelmed and or loses the game for the Rangers. He's just a steady pair of hands. And of course, uh, he was the captain of the Hartford Wolfpack this past season. And if that's where he starts this season, I would imagine he would still be in that role for that team. So Brodzinski, you know, a pretty nice NHL, AHL swingman. You could definitely do a lot worse than Johnny Brodzinski. And he actually came close to scoring a goal in this game. Uh, there was a situation where Krasov and Brodzinski, you know, they basically just exploded into the Bruins zone. Krasov had the puck up the right side along the boards, made a centering pass to Brodzinski, who had gotten behind the defense. And Brodzinski has what I would probably call a little bit of an underrated shot. He snapped off a really wicked shot here, got a piece of the crossbar, and stayed out of the net. But he came very close to scoring there. And uh, Brodzinski, again, if there's a situation where you're the Rangers and somebody gets hurt and they're going to miss just a game or two and you got to call somebody up, look, I know there's more exciting names there's bigger prospects. Obviously, you know, Brodzinski's about 28 years old now. But if you just need to fill in for a game or two, I think, uh, once again, you could do a lot worse than Johnny Brodzinski uh, as far as an NHL, AHL swingman is concerned. So nice to see him uh, have a pretty solid game for himself here. I should also mention that that whole play I just described, the one with Krasov and Brodzinski, it was set up when uh, Vitaly Krasov lifted the stick of his opponent, and that's what resulted in the puck, you know, leaving the Ranger zone, and Krasov races after it and makes the pass to Brodzinski, and like I said, they missed uh, linking up for a goal here by just a couple of inches. Uh, Krasov in this game also had a really nice defensive play. I believe the Rangers were shorthanded at the time, but the Bruins kind of broke out. They actually scored a shorthanded goal in this game. But in this situation, Krasov was the last guy back, and he went down and blocked the shot, shot deflected into the netting. You don't really think of Vitaly Krasov as, you know, a, a standout defensive forward, and he probably won't be. But it is nice to see, you know, him making a couple of plays here on defense, and, you know, maybe that's a way that he can win over his teammates as well and carve out a big role for himself. It certainly can't hurt. And obviously, look, you got to be able to play in all three zones in this league. It can't just be about, you know, flashy offensive skill. So it was nice to see Krausoff, you know, kind of stick his nose in there a little bit tonight, make a couple of gritty plays as well. And speaking of forwards who maybe surprised a little bit last night in terms of, uh, you know, just their overall defensive play, I would throw Julian Gauthier in there uh, as well. Gauthier is a big kid, and I keep saying that I don't really see him as a fourth liner, but they had him on the fourth line uh, when this game started. And look, it's still entirely possible that he gets dealt before the start of the regular season, although we are running out of time as far as that's concerned. But Julian Gauthier, you know, he was involved in a couple of uh, after-the-whistle dust-ups, played a little bit more physical than I think we're used to seeing him play. And honestly, 
he kind of has to do this at this point because I don't see the Rangers on opening night sticking Julian Gauthier into a top nine role. I don't even think he'll be out there. But if he's going to be out there, maybe it's like in a fourth line role or if there's a situation where he mixes into the game or into the lineup uh, every now and then, he might have to be part of the fourth line as opposed to, once again, the top nine. And he did play physical in this game. He ended up with four hits. And that uh, led the way as far as Ranger forwards are concerned. Uh, the only player to have more hits was actually Will Cooley. Will Cooley was out there playing physical hockey. Like I said, there was a lot to really like in this game. Uh, Cooley, you know, while we're talking about him here, uh, he ended up with just 13 minutes and 52 seconds of ice time. I'd like to see him get a little bit more, you know, particularly since this is somebody that's trying to make this team. And I think when somebody's kind of on the roster bubble, you almost owe it to them to get them out there as often as possible. You know, we don't really need to see... You know, I'm trying to think of a good example. The Rangers didn't have their their superstars out there, or a lot of them weren't out there. But we don't really need to see Vincent Trocek get 20 minutes and 14 seconds, I don't think. I mean, maybe that's a bad example because Trocek's new to the Rangers, and he's got to get used to his linemates. So it might make sense to give him some time. But, you know, guys like uh, Mika Zibanejad, Chris Kreider, they are who they are. We know what we're going to get from them. And I don't think it's really all that important to give them a ton of ice time in the preseason. You definitely want to get them out there and get them into the swing of things. But I, for one, like to see the guys that are truly battling for the roster spots. I want to see those guys get a lot of ice time. So Cooley only getting 13.52 was a little bit disappointing. But we got training camp still ongoing here. We got four preseason games left as well. So I'm sure we'll see more of him as, you know, the whole thing progresses here. And we gear up for the start of the regular season. I suppose I should mention the overtime period, even though the uh, Rangers ended up losing this one and lost in fairly short order in the overtime period. It's three on three, sudden death, just like the regular season. And the Rangers, I found this interesting as well. They start with Trocek and Fox. No surprises there. They also start with Jimmy Vesey, which I suppose isn't really a surprise either for you know the reasons that I've discussed, that being that Jimmy Vesey is trying to make this team. And so you give him every opportunity to play his best foot forward. And hey, you know what? Preseason or not, this game's going into overtime. You're playing a rival, and Jimmy Vesey has played very well. Uh, it's very possible Gerard Gallant just said, okay, I'm going with my three best players, the three guys that have played the best, uh, that being Trocek, Fox, and Vesey, and that's what they went with. Uh, unfortunately, the Rangers had an opportunity in this overtime period. Trocek tried to get the pass to Fox. It missed, and then not too long after this, a 2 on one for the Bruins, and uh, Greer drew a little bit of iron when he took his shot for the Bruins, but he scored, beat Louis Domingue, and uh, the Bruins win the game in overtime. Uh, the Rangers, for whatever this is worth to anybody, uh, they do technically get a point for this if you're really into, you know, preseason NHL standings. But um, yeah, I mean, the, the big thing here, again, it would have been nice to get a win, but the big thing is the ongoing battle for, you know, positions and roster spots and, you know, spots on the power play, spots on the penalty kill, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I figure we might as well wrap up today by talking about the Ranger penalty kill. There's not a ton to say about it because, you know, the Bruins only ended up with one power play in this game, but I found it interesting. You had, as far as the forwards are concerned, uh, Lafreniere was out there for 111. I like that because Gallant mentioned that, you know, he might want to get the kids, some of the younger players, some looks on the penalty kill, have them ready to go if they're needed to play that role in the regular season. So Lafreniere uh, led the way as far as Ranger forwards with 111. Trocek was out there for 101. No surprise. We know he's going to be a big part of the PK this season. Gustav Riedal got 59 seconds. Johnny Brodzinski got 49 seconds. Riedal, you know, that's kind of his MO. He's trying to make this team as kind of a fourth liner. And, uh, you know, that's one of his strengths, you know, by all accounts, uh, having previously played in the SHL. What I found interesting was that Ryan Carpenter did not get any time on the penalty kill. And again, I I'm sure that part of the reason for that is that the Bruins only had one power play. Uh, but Carpenter, another guy that's known for his strong work on the PK, I would imagine that you know, the next game that he plays, he'll see some time when the Rangers are shorthanded uh, and be given that opportunity to show what he can do uh, as part of that unit. But uh, a good penalty kill for the Rangers, like I said, the Bruins only had the one power play. But um, Rangers killed it off very well. Very, very few scoring opportunities to speak of. The Bruins got like one decent look with about 15 seconds to go. But beyond that, you know, the Rangers, they wouldn't even let the Bruins gain entry during this power play. They were standing them up in the neutral zone. And uh, the Bruins had to keep circling back and kind of resetting. And it took them a long time just to get into the Rangers zone. And like I said, just the one half-decent opportunity toward the very end of the man advantage. Uh, but I figure we could pretty much call it there. If you guys would like to get in touch with this podcast, please send an email to LockedOnNYRangers at gmail.com. Once again, that is locked on NYRangers at gmail.com. And definitely give us a follow on Twitter as well at LO underscore NY underscore Rangers. Once again, that is at LO underscore NY underscore Rangers. And definitely subscribe to the Locked On New York Rangers YouTube channel.
Thanks again, guys. I'll see you next time. Thanks for making Locked On New York Rangers your first listen every day. In our next episode, we're going to talk about who is helping their cause with the Rangers and who is potentially hurting their cause with the Rangers as it pertains to opening night roster spots. Now make your second listen, Locked On NHL. Locked On experts give you a daily 30-minute podcast on all things NHL all year long. Stay up to date on everything in the hockey world. Locked On NHL, your daily 30-minute NHL podcast.